And now, for some words of a friendship forged in the midst of conflict, I ask to come to the stage, Tokeril Yekur, spoke the memorial tour director. Tokeril squirmed its way to the podium, its aging non-Newtonian form no longer able to constitute solid legs. It gripped the lectern with a pair of pseudopods and extended what could generously be called a head up so the assembled crowd could see. It took in a breath of argon supplied by a canister wheeled alongside him by its eldest spawn and spoke, its aging auto-translator crackling. Jake Golder was a great man, and more so even than that, he was a good friend. We met in the most unlikely of places, as enemies on the field of battle. It was Earth Year, 3890, in the Battle of the Spiteful Earth on Neruko. I was assigned to a squadron whose primary objective was to lead the charge in between bombardment volleys meant to slowly but surely drive the enemy back. My squadron, however, was far too eager and was caught in a blast. Our exo-armors were torn to shreds, with only my armor being left intact enough to keep me in the fray. Well, that was a lie. The servos in my legs were damaged beyond repair, and I was leaking from the arm. All I could do to keep myself safe was to dive into the crater that the rest of my squad stood moments earlier. As fate would have it, I was not the only one with this idea. Before I could register what was happening in front of me, a human soldier slid down the crater's wall, spotted me, and had the barrel of his rifle aimed squarely at my face. All I could do was lay stock still and hope that he got the message, and he did. He gestured at me to throw my rifle away. We couldn't talk to each other back in those days, and we both did at the same time. He later took a look at my arm and called his superior officers. I thought that he was calling for backup for a moment, but he successfully mimed to me that the men he called weren't going to hurt me. And they didn't. They lifted me onto a stretcher and took me across the battlefield to a POW camp. I heard tales that humans liked to freeze us and chip us apart bit by bit until we were dead, but the rumors couldn't have been more wrong. I and other prisoners were treated to every amenity we could ever need, proper medical care as directed by my fellow Lear prisoners, and by the end of it I didn't know a one of them who didn't look on the humans at least a little bit fondly. I was kept in the camp until the end of the war, when it was decided that if we didn't end it there, there wouldn't be enough of either of us for a winner to exist. After the war, I was sent home, but I couldn't get that man out of my head. If it weren't for him showing me that sliver of mercy, I'd be dead. So, once inter-system trade and travel was properly established, following the now legendary peace talks, I set about tracking him down. My search led me to this planet, forth from your star, one I soon became aware is not the birthplace of your kind, but served as the true home for billions nonetheless. At the base of Olympus Mons, in this sprawling, terraformed marvel of a city, I found him. We exchanged names and stories, and soon we found ourselves becoming fast friends, goes to show what a little kindness will do for you. Before we knew it, we were sharing in each other's interests, reading snooker and action movies for Jake, and music, cooking, and Wakiro riding for myself. As the years passed, our bond grew deeper and deeper, until I found myself donning a human suit as the best man at his wedding. Life was idyllic, and therefore disaster had to strike. Unbeknownst to either party, the warheads used in our bombardment shells contained a radioactive material that, while harmless to Lair, proved fatal to humans. But this death wasn't quick, no. It was the slowest and most relentless cancer ever seen in human history. It began in his lungs, but it slowly and inevitably spread to his stomach, heart, and brain. And before we knew it, he was gone taken by what went on to become the single greatest cause of death to come from the war, second only to the pig-headed desire for conflict expressed by the top brass. Not the bombs or the bullets, neither the aircraft nor the warriors on the ground, but a single element. 
Life is precious, and death comes all too quickly for most to appreciate that. So I ask you all, while you pay your respect to the brave souls who gave themselves in the defense of your world, that you reflect on the lives of those bold soldiers and realize the ultimate tragedy in their passing. Thank you. And with those words, Tokarul slimed its way away, having done its job. The day, however, was not yet over, and Tokarul had one more thing to do. In the midst of quiet gravestones on the dew-laden grass stirred only by the passing breeze, Tokarul stood, its eldest spawn stood by it, with a faint idea of what was to happen next. It hid its sorrow. Liwilk, Tokarul asked, Yes, progenitor, Liwilk replied, twitching. Leave me a while if you would. Liwilk's twitching ceased. It understood and strode away, knowing in the pit of its heart that it couldn't stop what was to come, no matter how much it wanted to. And Tokaril was left alone, among the stones, in peace. It sidled closer to the nearest headstone and laid its head upon it. Hello, old friend, it spoke to the grave. It has been quite some time. I've had myself a spawning pool of my own, a lineage that I am afraid will long outlive your own. It was you who ultimately made it possible, and for that I can never thank you enough. Are you sure you want to do this? asked a faint voice on the wind. I'm old, Jack. I can hardly hold myself together any more. Every twitch of my membrane sends daggers running through me. It's all that has been on my mind for a good long while now. I have already ensured my future, and the past has long left me. All I have left to do is let go of the present. And with as mighty a push as its aging form could muster, it expelled the end of its argon supply tube from its body and collapsed with a sense of fulfillment. It smiled genuinely and faded into the final black. Do you want to go ride some walk hero, old friend? asked Jack. Yes, yes I do.